Hello party people, it is Will Pemble here. Today we're going to start on the electronics that control the Dragon's Breath uh, respiration system. So that's going to be kind of fun and we ought to get some cool technics, not pyrotechnics, just technics, pyrotechnics, because it'll be something uh, really cold that comes out of the thing. So cryotechnics, not pyrotechnics. Um, this you may have seen a time or two, that's the protopallet. It is the thing that my company builds to teach kids about electronics and coding and stuff. And so, of course, I'm going to use the protopallet because it's exactly what I built it for to make awesome things. Um, what I've got on this particular protopallet, if you can see, is here's an Arduino Uno, just a little microcontroller, and I'll show you how to do those. You can go to protopallet.com if you want to learn how to uh, do awesome stuff with Arduino. Highly recommend. I've got a relay, which is... It's a relay is just like a light switch, but instead of a finger that turns the light switch on and off, this little signal going into it turns it on and off. And so it's electrically controlled switch. It just click on, click off, and you'll see how that works in a minute. And so today what I want to do is I just want to be able to use this red button to push a red button to click this relay to open the solenoid to release some CO2 through the Dragon Breath respiration system so that we can start to get a feel for how that's going to work and how it's going to look. So we're going to do a little bit of electronics, a little bit of mechanics, and a little bit of fun with inert gases. So let's get started. The first thing you need when you want to do something with CO2 is CO2. The next thing you need when you want to do something with the Dragon Breath Respiration System is the Dragon Breath Respiration System. The third thing you need when you're doing something about the Dragon Breath System, or the Dragon Cart in particular, is the Dragon Graphic. Carl will be here next week and we will get more Dragon Graphics. By the way, Carl drew this, I did not. He is an incredibly talented artist. I am someone who appreciates incredibly talented artists. Small power supply for the Arduino. Slightly less small power supply for the solenoid, which is part of the Dragon Breath Respiration System. Back to our wiring. So, so again, we come out of the negative side of the relay. This is going to connect to the positive side of our battery. And when I push this red button right here, I should hear two clicking noises. I should hear the click of the relay on the, on the uh, proto pallet here. And I also am hoping that I hear the click of my solenoid, which means the relay is closing the circuit, sending power through the solenoid, and the solenoid is doing what it should do, which is to open the valve, which would allow the gas to, to pass through the respiratory system of our dragon's nostrils. So now I'm going to push the red button and see what happens. Did you hear that? Did you hear that big thump? And you can feel it too if you feel it here. You can feel the thump of this switch. So the relay closes, the solenoid opens the valve. Now all we have to do is hook the business end of this thing up and then we should see if we can actually make our Dragon's breath work. Shall we try it? Let's try it. Slight change of plans. I am missing the wrong kind of junction to connect the CO2 up to the thing, but luckily I do have the right kind of connection to hook a propane tank up to it. And so we'll try it with a slightly less inert gas. Be right back. I like to keep a little propane around in case, you know, I need propane. I like to keep a big fire extinguisher around in case I need propane. For our test here, we're not going to, like, start by blowing stuff up. We're going to start with just seeing if we can pass gas through the thing. I said pass gas. Point this away from me. I don't expect anything bad to happen. But, you know, one never does, right? So what I want is I want all of this stuff pointing in a direction away from me, right? I want all of these valves and everything pointing away from me. 
I want to be out of the line of fire, both frontwards or backwards from this stuff. And I'm going to get one other thing. I'll be right back. I keep getting safer and safer the more I think about this experiment. Okay, here we go. Ready? Did you hear that? I guess there's only one thing left to try. The important thing to know about propane is that propane is heavier than air. So if you had a bunch of propane and you released it into a room, it would go to the floor. So propane is heavier and it drops to the floor. So what I want is I want the nozzles uh, where my propane is going to be coming out. I want those above this tube so that when I turn the thing off, the propane will settle down into the bottom of this tube rather than the reverse because that way uh, there's, a, there's a much lower chance of any air mixing with propane inside the tube. So the flame front will happen at the edge of the tube, maybe a little bit into the tube, but mostly the flame front from this experiment is going to happen outside the tube. We don't want any fire inside the plumbing. And propane is great for that because propane won't burn unless it mixes with air. I think it needs at least 2% air in order for it to mix, uh, in order for it to be combustible, right? So propane's the fuel, air is the oxygen, and then we'll put some fire to it so that we get some heat. And that's how we're going to get heat out of this thing. But we won't, we don't want air going back into here. So the propane will stop when we pull, when we, when we hit our button or when we take our hand off the button and that will shut down the whole flame front or so I think all right now here's a really important thing and I'm actually gonna re I'm gonna actually move this clip before the fire part do not try this at home this is not for you to try at home this is for you to watch and this is for people who have expertise in this sort of thing and understand how it works to do don't try this at home this is not safe to do at home so I'll use my trusty Right, this is just a very low, you know, I'll cover up my air and you can see, see, I'll put, I'll put some fire here, and then I'll push my button, how am I going to do this where I'm not pointed at the thing, here we go, oh, I like this a lot better. Now, it's okay for you to be pacing directly towards the flames because, you know, there's a there's a, a world of electronics separating us. So, you ready? <laughs> so awesome. You want to see it again? I'll tell you what, I love propane. <laughs> That's really and truly all we have time for today. I've got to get, uh, I've got to get chores done and go play with my kids. We're, we're thinking of maybe going to see a movie. Hey, if you were going to go see a movie, what movie would you go see? I'm curious to know. Um, that's the scoop for today. Thank you for helping me bring physics, family, and fun to kids everywhere. I am Will Pemble. Please like, subscribe, share. We're doing really good at, at gathering up subscribers. We're doing really good at growing the gang. We are very close to having 10,000 subscribers, and when we get 10,000 subscribers, we're going to go to the YouTube space in Los Angeles, because when you have 10,000, you're allowed to do that, and we're going to shoot a whole special episode and, and see that place, and I'll show it to you, and it's going to be amazing and awesome. So please subscribe. We are so close. I am very excited. Thank you for helping me bring physics, family, and fun to kids everywhere. I will see you soon.